Hi, this is Terry. I've lost 180 pounds with keto, carnivore, and counting calories. Now I'm on a mission to improve the health of my heart. Good morning. It is Sunday morning. I'm not dressed for church, but I got my hair and makeup done. Um, <clears throat> I want to go through some things that I do on Sunday mornings. Um, this is the, the uh, current uh, protein powder I'm using right now. Um, I still have a lot of this left. So, I wonder, I could put it out in another container so it's not so honking big. I might do that. Hang on. There we go. I put it in this. This is a lot smaller. And uh, this is not the spoon that comes with it. It comes with the bigger spoon. So, on Sundays, I use a half of the spoon, uh, half of a serving in my protein coffee. So, in the morning, I run... <clears throat> I run my uh, my regular K cup, just my cup. I run this through three times through my Keurig, and then I uh, I go on and sip on I don't know maybe six seven ounces of it, and then after it cools down I put it in here and I add a half of a serving of my protein powder, some of my chocolate electrolytes, and pro of course you know one of my one of my dailies one of my uh, skinny syrups, and some milk. So then I put this in the refrigerator and I take this to church with me. So I sip on this during church because mom and I eat later than I normally eat. So I'm going to set this in the refrigerator. Hang on. Boy, I'm excited that's now in this small container. Because I'll, I'll, when this is out, I'll buy a different kind or try something different. I might get some of that um, a keto chow like you all... Uh, well, I've tried that one before, and because uh, one of y'all sent it to me, and I'm excited to try that. All right, this is chia seeds. Um, I know you all have mentioned them before, and somebody this morning reminded me of them. I'm like, oh, yeah, I all totally forgot about them. So what I've done is this was two, two tablespoons of the chia seeds and a half cup of regular skim milk. Um so I got that in there, and um, and then a couple squirts of my hazelnut syrup. So we're gonna see what this is. I microwaved it because I wanted it warm. I got. I'll have to watch online and see how other people do it, but I wanted it warm, and it spilled out, and I lost probably about a fourth of it. But hmm. That's good. Like instead of oatmeal, it had, hang on, I'll get the things we'll talk about them. I know y'all been telling me about these for a while and I've tried them dry and stuff, but. And I never knew what like the, the what all the excitement was about them, but yeah, like instead of my oatmeal, so I was going to compare them. So I know the servings are a little different. Um, but since these swell, I don't know. Anyway, so a fourth cup of, of oats is 170 calories. Two tablespoons of these is 130 calories. So it's definitely, this is 44 grams, this is 24 grams. So this is twice as much of these as these. So for whatever that's worth. But I don't think these swell quite as much as this. Um, fat, there's 2.5 grams of fat in, in my, this is um, steel cut oats. There's 2.5 grams of fat. There's eight grams of fat in chia seeds. Carbohydrates, there is 31 total carbs in oats and eight total carbs in chia seeds. Um, fiber, there's five in this and eight in this. So if you're doing net carbs, this would be no, this would be zero carbs. Um, so I guess that's kind of why a lot of people like them. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's interesting. But, uh, but I have to figure out how to, because uh, these, I didn't try them cold. I wanted them hot. But... I, and I did a, a, a half cup of milk. Um, in order for it to become 
more solid like this, I had to do, I had to heat it up. I don't know if over time it would have, but, um, but I let it sit for about 10 to 20 minutes. That's good. I like it. And I've got two eggs. These poor eggs, they're, well, I cooked them for two minutes. And then they, the tops were still, I didn't do them my old mother way. And uh, then the, but I did, but then the tops were like still runny. I'm like, so I'm like, well, put you some water in there and do you like you should, Terry. So I did, but they are like, like rubber. It's all right. You know me, I'll still eat them. Um, today's Sunday. I go to church with Mama. I mean, I'll go to church and then go eat with Mom. We usually go to our eating spot. And if they have it, you know I always get a pork steak. I should ask them what the weight is of pork steak. So then I can plug it into my app. But anyway, so the macros will definitely not be up to par today. I don't know the weights of stuff, but it's all right. Anyway, hang on, let me get this last bite. So yeah, so I'm gonna research some of these, some recipes for the chia seeds. Um, I'm catching up on comments because Saturday is kind of like my day for myself, so I just don't really do comments or social media much. I mean, I might look at TikTok a little bit, but I kind of, if it's meal prep day, I'm focusing on meal prep. But if it's Terry day, I just focus on doing whatever it is I'm in the mood to do. And that's what I usually do on the week, on Saturday. So, Saturday I just kind of detach from the world and, and just kind of turn inward. It's the one day where I don't have to have human interaction. And so, um, it's like I don't really text much or call much or anything. Anyway. So now I'm catching up on my comments. Yeah. I want to see how you make this warm. There's got to be a crock pot method. I don't know. Got to do some research, but boy, less calories and um, overnight. Overnight, one third cup of chia seeds. Two cups milk, then they have flavorings. Makes two servings. So a third cup. Well, that. In a bowl or jar, mix together the seeds, milk, vanilla. Uh, oh, well, they use vanilla and sweetener. Cover and put in refrigerator. When ready to enjoy, divide mixture into two bowls. Top with fruit of your choice and serve. So these can be done overnight. <clears throat> but a third cup of chia seeds, that's more than what this thing shows. Two tablespoons. Is that be four tablespoons? Which is, in four tablespoons a fourth cup? Oh well. Whatever they say. But anyway, so yeah, looks like you can do it overnight. So I'll set some up and then we'll set it up and we can eat that. We can try it tomorrow at lunch for breakfast. I mean, we'll see if they swell up. Ooh, I could do it now. And then I'll know by tonight if it swells up. Hang on. I'll use the same. Let me get this last little bit. I'll get this last. Use this container. All right. 
Now, I may not show you at the end of this because I'll probably forget by then. But I need a third cut. Fourth, half. Uh-oh. Oh, I got a two-thirds cup. Okay. I like these that have like a little, little lip inside that tells you if you do half of it. So this can be one-third cup. But you know me, I'm going to weigh it because I hate getting stuff dirty. Okay. Okay, so 50 grams. 50. Oh, I need a bigger thing. Hang on, let me find something big. Bigger than that. Nope, bigger than that. Hold on, let me go get a big thing. Hold on. Hey. I'll just use this. All right. So a third cup of, what did we say, 50 grams, five zero grams. Well, that's funny. Isn't that what I said, 50 grams? Because that's double this. Anyway, whatever. Let's just see. You know what I said? Oh, yes, yeah, some stayed on the bottom. So, yeah. All right, evidently it's 50-ish grams. We're just going to say 50-ish. Then, <clears throat> how much milk does it say? Two cups of milk. That's funny. These are great value, and it says to use great value milk. That's funny. Okay, I'm going to zero this out. And my um, serving is two, 24, so 48 grams. Yes, you know I'm doing grams. I don't want to dirty something up. I mean 480 grams. 240 times 2. Yeah, that would be 480 grams. Uh oh got a little wild there. Got a little over, but it'll be all right. It's 500, it's 500 grams, but that's all right. That's all right. I probably went over on the on the chia seeds for all I know. Well, and it says you can add some vanilla, sweetener, sugar, cane, whatever. I want to do all that. But I might as well do this. I usually do Two, three, one, two, three. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to use this spoon. If I'm doing this wrong, please tell me. Because, uh... Hopefully it won't expand so much outside of this. Alright. Let me get a little lid. I'll pop this in the refrigerator, and like I said, it said overnight, but that's eight hours, so by tonight, I should know how it's going to be, so, all right, well, that's them, I'm going to, we'll check them later on today. Hey, I forgot to say, it was Ketavor Karen that reminded me about the chia seeds, so thank you, Ketavor Karen, it was, they're good, so I'm going to make them some more. Hey. If you've been watching me very long, you know what Sunday is. I haven't been able to do this because I was carnivore for those three weeks. Mom has this pimento cheese. I take pimento cheese and three carrot sticks. So I do one. Sometimes I'll do... um piece of cheese if she has some nice cheese sliced up, but I'm not going to do it today. Two. I'm going to tell you what Pastor said in just a minute. Alright, three. Be right back. Uh, please know I do not do his sermon justice, but if you ever want to watch it, I have the link to my church here on YouTube. I have a link down in the description of all my videos. So we're still working on ready, set, go. And he's talking about um, how disciples, uh, the early Christians lived 
that the er, dis disciplines the early Christians lived by so they could be ready for God. Um, oh, I need to look up a quote. Hold on. Okay, so I looked it up. So today he was talking about um, how people enjoy, like, they may not necessarily watch sports, but they really get into it, like, during March Madness. They get into basketball or the final playoffs of the football games. That's whenever people really get into it. Um, and he said that because a lot of times during those times, it's the final play that can win the game. And there's a lot of pressure um, you know, because there's people um, – cheering and the stadiums are full there's a lot of adrenaline of fans but he said also there's a lot of booze from the opposition fans and then he quoted john wooden now i may not have this exactly right that said don't let praise or criticism get to you it is a weakness to let to get caught up in either one praise or criticism and he says you know, like those people who are big fans, like I have a sister who's a big fan of the Chiefs big time, which is great. You know, she loves them. Um, he said, but we're also on Team Jesus. We are ambassadors of Christ. He said, we are royalty. So you are talking to royalty. So, yeah. Um, he said that some will applaud us for being Team Jesus, but some will also put us down. So the same crowd, he was car carried off of last week's sermon, which was about Peter, um, whenever he healed the lame man. He said the same crowd that praised Peter for healing the lame, there were also people in the crowd, which was the Pharisees and Sadducees and priests, and they were putting them down. Um, he said, we cannot focus on the negative, and Satan knows that. So like even with me, like sometimes I'll get, you know, several positive comments and then I'll get a negative comment in my comment section. And I have to t let myself just, it's, you know, that's someone's opinion and everybody has an opinion and that's okay. And so sometimes I, you, you will see me, sometimes I get a little snarky back if it's something I don't agree with, but th that's, that's not how I should act. Um, but anyway, he said that Satan knows that we take criticism um, personally. So number one, let's see. He says, if we lead for live for Jesus, we will live. Oh boy, here it comes. If we live for Jesus, we will live in opposition to political, social, and popular religious agendas and pressure. So um, you know, Peter and Jesus, they, and and Paul, James, and all of them lived in opposition. Uh, and we're in opposition to, you know, like the Pharisees and Sadducees and the priests of those days. But he said, we need to keep, we need to center our emotions on Christ, not the praises or criticisms. Um, then he talks about, uh, let's see, that was number one. Let's see, where am I at down here? Um, he said that on that day, thousands were being saved, but the priests were upset and took he took them Peter and James to jail, um, and uh, and they felt like they were a political threat to the Pharisees and Sadducees, and Jesus was seen as a political threat and and a social threat, and um, that we people must be okay with. Results of following Jesus, whether it's good or bad, and that was in second. And then he taught Second Timothy three verse twelve, uh, and Jesus was sending out. Now listen, I didn't write that quote down. That's just one of the things. Was Second Timothy three verse twelve, um, and then later on, Jesus was is sending us out like lambs among wolves. That was in Luke somewhere. I didn't get it wrote down, and he says we will face opposition for. We will face opposition, but our center of emotions needs to be on Christ. Number two, the Holy Spirit was with Peter and helped him. So down here. So now he said, picture this, the same government that, that had Jesus had to stand in front of, you know, he says like a big arena and Jesus stood there and was facing opposition by all these, all these congressmen. Um, priests, Pharisees, Sadducees. Now, Peter and John were there just a couple months later. And, you know, the last thing they saw 
or one of the things, you know, had been going through their mind was when Jesus stood there and then they sent him off to Pontius Pilate. So, you know, that's some of the context of it. Um, and so he said that after John, Peter and John stood before them, they began to question them. By what power or in what name have you done this? Then Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit and said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a disabled man, by what means he was healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified and whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing here before you healthy. So um, if we, when we center our emotions on Christ and the Holy Spirit, takes over, we can display the character of Christ. Then, let's see, number three, I've got number three is, oh no, that was that one. Um, so then he talks about, there is in, in, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to people by which we must be saved. And then when when they, meaning the, the, the priests and Sadducees and all those people up there on their, in their high horses, um, when they were observed untrained men, they were amazed and recognized, uh, observed the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and untrained men. They were amazed and recognized that they had been with Jesus. And since they saw the man who had been healed standing with them, they had nothing to say in opposition. What can you say to that? Um, it says, um, we need to, to shut the devil up by spending time with Jesus. So reading the Bible. Um, the more we devote and spend time with Jesus, the more we can stand firm against the, against the pressures to conform. Um, then he says, Acts 4, this is 18 through 12. So they called for them and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Peter and John answered them, whether it's right in the sight of God for us to listen to you rather than to, rather than to God, you decide. For we are unable to stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. So we can never forget. Something we can never forget is that we are the light it shines brightness in the darkness. And so the big takeaway, you know, we're the light that shines brightness in the darkness. It says, he was saying that, you know, we're all, we were all together in church. And, you know, together we're this bright light. And, and you know, when you have a bright room, if you turn on flashlight, it's not going to make it any brighter. So it's good. You know, we all do need to come together and and um, worship Jesus and spend time with Jesus together. Because then whenever we leave that's whenever we need to be a light in somebody else's darkness. So when we leave church, um, <clears throat> we don't just ruminate on what we heard and, and keep it to ourselves. We need to go out and tell others about Jesus so that way they can join us in heaven. So that's the biggest takeaway is that we need to share the light of Jesus in the world. So again, so like I said, he's working on the get ready, set, go. That's the series that he's working on. So he's talking about us learning how to prepare ourselves so when God says, Psst, Terry, now's the time. Tell so-and-so about me. We'll be ready because we will have spent time with him and we will recognize that it's God talking because there's plenty of times where I thought I was talking right, but I wasn't talking right. You know, what I was saying isn't what God would have wanted me to say because I was just blurting out from my own my own heart and not from you know, letting the Holy Spirit take over. So, all right, that was church today. I'll see you and show you lunch. I already ate my salad, but we're at a table with mom's friend, and that's my pork steak and my broccoli. I had brought my dressing and I used for my salad, and I brought my own um, barbecue sauce, that watered down barbecue sauce. So here it is after it has been soaking for eight hours. Clumpy, definitely clumpy. Um, I actually liked it after I microwaved it this morning. So I'm wondering about a slow cooker situation. Again, I got to do some research about this. But after I microwaved it, it kind of, they puffed up and it really became a good, good texture. 
Um, but it also made a huge mess. So I'm just going to have to play with it and see what I think. I mean, it's... Hang on, let me see if I can get this clump out. Come here, fella. Nope, hold on. That's what you see, like how the... Where'd that clump go? Come on, where'd you go? Oh, sure, now you're going to make me look like a fool, aren't you? Well, but there is one. It's just kind of a, a crunch, you know, like that. So, maybe the overnight version isn't like a thicker texture, which is okay. So, maybe the overnight is more for somebody who wants it runny. But I'm going to microwave it. And I'm going to see if I can microwave it and get that texture I like, and I'll show you. So their ratio of chia seeds to water, even when microwave, it's not the same as what um, Susan said this morning because it's it's too thin and I don't like it watery. Now, just for uh, this is just this was just an experiment in the first place, but um, I'm not throwing it away or anything. But um, anyway, so their ratio definitely just makes it watery. So. It's whatever. <clears throat> um, yeah. So I want it more gelatinous. So I'll have to do a little more looking. But I don't like that. I don't like that amount. So I'm going to add some more seeds to it. I'm not eating it tonight anyway. So I just wanted to heat it up to see if that did anything. I'm going to add another serving of seeds. And then in the end, this will be three servings. So I'll add some more seeds and see what happens. But anyway, in the meantime, just so you know, overnight, if you follow their directions, it's going to be watery hey so supper tonight i've got some mashed rutabaga and i just put in some of my crave all day it's a it's like a garlicky uh, nutritional yeast kind of flavor so i bought some of that in there mm -hmm. and i'll let you know what happens i mean as time goes on after i watch some more videos about the chia seeds because man I know y'all told me about them, but I never really looked at the back to compare it to um, oatmeal, you know, the oats that I eat. Chicken, onions, peppers, jicama, salsa, and um, a little of my salad dressing. So I got a Southwestern bowl. I really don't need the, the rutabaga. But it was thawed out, so you don't want to eat it. Mmm. I'm a fruit. So. Alright. That's my supper. No macros today, because until I asked the lady about the size of the pork steak, and she's like, um, maybe a half a pound. I thought, bless her. She had no idea. That thing looks like it's like a whole pound. Anyway, so, yeah. So, all right. I love you guys. Have a happy Sunday. Well, have a happy Tuesday. And I'll see you later. Bye.